Um, thank you very much, uh, Premier, for joining us. And I see you have your mask around your neck and that you've only taken it off because you're in a safe area, not near anybody. Uh, Premier, could you tell me how you found out that you had uh, contracted COVID-19? Well, well, firstly, the, the, the curiosity was triggered off by uh, the sad and sudden passing of my colleague, uh, MEC Gordon Kihakilu. So I immediately went for testing, uh, and it didn't take much time. And uh, the results came out and said I'm, 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 I'm positive. Um, apart from the incident of uh, MEC Kihakilu, um, I've been uh, you know, experiencing feelings of uh, uh, fever, but uh, nothing debilitating. Um, I've been experiencing this over the past two weeks, uh, and but there, no, there were no other symptoms, um, no serious coughing, no sneezing, no temperature. Um, I don't know how many times I've been screened. Uh, even today, when the temperature was taken, it was quite mild, um, and, and I'm glad that uh, I, 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 I did go. Um, blood tests were taken. Um, as well as X-ray, um, and so when I finish here, I'll be hitting the road just to make sure that uh, we do the necessary follow-up on X-ray. Uh, but um, I thought about kicking, and um, with the permission of my doctors, I'll continue uh, the work that I've been assigned to do. Well, Premier, I'm glad to hear that it doesn't sound you, like you've been affected too badly. Of course, such tragic news about MEC uh, Keke Kilwe uh, dying from COVID-19. And obviously, as you say, it's your exposure to, to him that has probably led to your COVID-19 positive test. How is the Public Works MEC doing? Is, um, is the, uh, public the Public Works MEC is, is doing uh, fairly well. Uh, as you would know, he's in self-isolation. Um, and uh, we would want him to to be out there resting, um, and uh, whatever reports we get, um, he seems to be doing okay. Okay, well that is good news as well. Um, the Northwest Province um, is not one of the hotspot provinces, but it certainly has been impacted by the virus. I think you've had some sort of 36 deaths, and it's been worsened by the movement of people in and out of the province. Tell us a little bit more about the COVID situation in the Northwest province. Yes, you're right. Um, what, what, what has been happening is that over time, uh, we've been enjoying spot number two, if I could put it that way, without sounding in any way competitive. Um, next to next to next to Northern Cape, uh, but suddenly, with the return of man workers, uh, we had this kind of problem. We we all thought that it was uh, the the question of uh, quarantine, the question of screening, uh, was well handled, especially with regard to uh, sending areas, and many of the sending areas would be in the Eastern Cape, but we further realized that. Uh, once the workers heard uh, that the mine was getting back to operation, um, then um, they started panicking. Uh, people are just so scared uh, to lose jobs. One can understand that. But unfortunately, it's cut out the plans that the mining houses had, as well as uh, we in the, in, the, in the public sector, especially from a, from a health perspective. Uh, we have since identified uh, the areas as, as our MP, epicenter and um, as a result of that we have just recently in partnership with the private sector uh, completed a, a field hospital in the Rassenberg area uh, which we think was a good uh, uh, step uh, but uh, a number of mining houses have also handed over to us uh, something like three four hospitals they will be used for COVID uh, purposes. In addition to that, um, we had a very, very interesting uh, meeting with all the mining houses mm. um, um, in, in Rassenburg. And this was uh, after our deputy president had visited us about three weeks ago, right. emphasizing amongst others the need for us to, more, to work more collaboratively 
uh, with the uh, mining houses. It, and we think we are in course, we think we are joining forces, we have mobilized resources that we have in the province, and we, we think um, we, 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 we are on track. Um, a few days ago, I visited Impala, uh, and it was quite uh, encouraging uh, to see the isolation as well as the quarantine mm -hmm. facilities that they have out there. Premier, you know, it, it's so important that, that we work together and just speaking to officials in the Eastern Cape a little early in the program, that help is needed and, and, and people pulling together makes all the difference. I'm just wondering, now that um, you have lost a colleague, Gordon Kekakilwe, to the virus um, and you yourself are COVID-19 positive and another colleague is as well, does it sharpen your focus on this disease? Uh, does it make you realize just how serious it is? I'm not suggesting you didn't before, but does it change your relationship with uh, your messaging and how you will speak to people about COVID-19? It, it, it certainly sharpens the focus. It, it certainly uh, betters uh, the aggressiveness, the clarity, the energy with which we lead. Uh, in fighting this pan pandemic. So sad as it is, um, on, the, on the positive side, I, I think we are better informed, we are better encouraged, we are better motivated uh, to make sure that, hey, this pandemic is here and it is real. And we better move much faster with much greater vigor than we've been doing. Absolutely. Well, we wish you well this evening and, and wish you a speedy recovery. And thank you very much for your time.